जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल स्टूडेंट्स गिव द वर्ल्ड द बेस्ट यू हैव एंड द बेस्ट विल कम बैक टू यू दैट इज ऑलवेज बी काइंड ऑलवेज बी केयरिंग स्प्रेड हैप्पीनेस एंड यू विल योरसेल्फ रिसीव दैट हैप्पीनेस विथ डिविडेंस यू विल गेट दैट इमेंस सेल्फ सेटिस्फैक्शन सो स्टूडेंट्स विद दैट let's proceed with uh, today's article today we will discuss case 2 of projectile that is we will discuss the case of angular projection that is we are going to discuss the projectile motion when a body is projected from a point on the ground with a velocity u making angle theta with the horizontal right so our topic is angular projection when a body is projected from a point on the ground making angle theta with the horizontal so suppose students this is the case this is suppose x axis and let us consider this to be y axis this is a point o on the ground right ox is considered to be the horizontal oy is considered to be the vertical axis now suppose a projectile is projected with velocity u and it makes an angle theta with the horizontal so theta is the angle which the direction of motion of the projectile is making with the horizontal initially if you tend to follow a parabolic path we have already theoretically discussed that the nature of trajectory of a projectile is always parabolic we are going to mathematically verify this right suppose this is point a this is any arbitrary point point p this is the highest point point suppose it is b and this is the instant when the body strikes the ground let us consider this to be point c right students now as we are aware total time during which the projectile remains in air or space that is known as time of flight so if this is t equals to 0 so during the entire time during which the projectile remains in air or space that will be its time of flight denoted by capital t so this is students T equals to capital T. Capital T is the time of flight. Now OB, time taken by the projectile to move from O to B, must be exactly equal to the time taken by the projectile to move from B to C. That is, we have already discussed theoretically that we are assuming that the horizontal forces, that is the air resistance, all that forces are negligible. So the absence of air resistance, the time of ascent would be equal to time of descent. that is time taken by the projectile to move from o to b it will be equal to the time taken by the projectile to move from b to c and it will be obviously half of the time of flight isn't it so at this instant the time would be t by 2 capital t is the time of flight so at t by 2 the body will be at the highest point right this is the range the maximum distance which the projectile will cover along the horizontal in the time during which the projectile remains in air or space that is known as its range this will be the maximum height attained by the projectile during its motion capital h it's the maximum height maximum distance from the ground in the vertical direction that's the maximum height we'll try to find an expression for these things right and we are aware students projectile means any body which is thrown in air or space and whose motion is only and only under the influence of gravity it possesses two motions and both are independent of each other one is the horizontal motion the other one is the vertical motion horizontal motion it covers with uniform velocity because along the horizontal direction no net force acts on the body so in the absence of any horizontal force net acceleration along the horizontal direction is zero therefore horizontal component of velocity always remains constant throughout the motion of the projectile right so if you resolve u into two components this is ux it is u cos theta this is the horizontal component of the velocity while the other component which is along y axis it is the vertical component it is u sin theta right in the absence of any 
acceleration along the x direction the horizontal component of the velocity will remain constant so throughout the motion at any point this u cos theta remains constant right at any arbitrary point p it will be u cos theta at the highest point again the horizontal component will be u cos theta at any point over here again the horizontal component would be u cos theta at the instant when it strikes the ground here also the horizontal component would be u cos theta so u x is equal to final horizontal component of velocity it is equal to u cos theta which is equal to constant why because acceleration along the horizontal direction is zero in the absence of any horizontal force Clear students? While on the other hand, I stated a projectile causes vertical motion also, which is under the influence of gravity. It is due to the force of gravity that the body gets attracted. So when it is going upward, it will experience a is equal to minus g, and when it is coming downward, it will experience acceleration a, which is equal to plus g. So the vertical component of velocity keeps changing continuously at a constant rate of small g right so when it is going upward its vertical component of velocity will decrease look the length of the arrow here is smaller as compared to the initial vertical component of velocity at the highest point students it is very very important at the highest point the vertical component of velocity of a projectile is zero right so here vertical component of velocity at the highest point it is zero no doubt regarding this now when it is coming down towards the earth its vertical component of velocity will start increasing in magnitude at a constant rate and at the instant when it strikes the ground it will be maximum so this is final vertical component of velocity clear students okay one more thing which i have stated is at any instant when a body is following a curved path the direction of motion of the projectile is given by drawing a tangent at that particular point right so here the net velocity would be somewhat like this this is the net velocity which will be the resultant of vx and vy right this is the resultant velocity at the instant when it strikes the ground the resultant velocity would be like this this is the resultant velocity which is given by square root of vx square plus vy square vx vy being perpendicular the magnitude of the resultant would be given by square root of vx square plus vy square right students so what we do is first and foremost we will try to find out the equation of trajectory trajectory as you are aware it's the path followed by a projectile that is known as its trajectory we are going to prove that the nature of trajectory of a projectile is parabolic so for that what we consider is suppose during times t t equals to 0 to t equals to t those faulty time has elapsed the body has covered the distance from o to p so during this time suppose it has covered x horizontal distance and y vertical distance its coordinates of p may be considered to be x y right so what i am assuming is during the motion of the projectile from o to p that is in time small t the projectile has covered horizontal distance x and vertical distance y right so let's consider motion from o to p this is very important to write this point O to P means O is considered to be initial point, P is considered to be the final point, right? Now along horizontal, let's consider the motion along horizontal. Let's make use of second equation of motion. S X is equal to U X T plus half A X T square. In time t, the body has covered horizontal distance x. U X initial horizontal component of velocity, right? so that is u cos theta time is obviously t plus half what is ax 
there is no net force acting along the horizontal direction therefore ax is zero right so we get p is equal to x divided by u cos theta put this as equation number one clear students now let's consider motion along vertical now again let's make use of second equation of motion so second equation of motion is sy is equal to uy t plus half ay t square now in time t the body has covered a vertical displacement of y so therefore y is equal to uy initial vertical component of velocity is u sin theta it's pretty evident from the diagram it is u sin theta into t plus half body is going upwards isn't it so here it has got vertical motion which is under the influence of gravity here since it is moving in the upward direction therefore ay is minus g so it is minus g into t square put this as equation number 2 now students equation of trajectory is the mathematical relationship between x and y so what we do is simply substitute this value of t as x by u cos theta in equation 2 right so let's find out equation of trajectory so from 1 and 2 what we get is y is equal to u sin theta t is x over u cos theta minus half g t square that is x over u cos theta and whole square right so so equation of trajectory is y is equal to x tan theta minus half g over u square cos square theta into x square so this is the equation of trajectory and it is in the standard form of y is equal to ax plus bx square that is the standard equation of a parabola therefore students we have mathematically verified the fact that whether in the case of horizontal projection or angular projection the nature of trajectory of the projectile is always parabolic right the term for a given projection the term inside the bracket is constant so it is in the form of y equals to ax plus bx square so it is in the standard form of a parabola so you need to remember this formula right so equation of trajectory for angular projection when a projectile is projected at an angle theta with the horizontal is y is equal to x tan theta minus half gx square divided by u square cos square theta clear students so this is very very important one this is a first important result which we have obtained in this article right so this is equation of trajectory so we are over with equation of trajectory now let's find out the expression for the time of flight time of flight as i stated students it is the time during which the projectile remains in air or space so that is known as the time of flight okay for that what we do is all the expressions for time of flight maximum height range uh, will follow the simplest step just expressions can be obtained by using single step just make use of your common sense and try to make use of the appropriate equations right that you need to judiciously choose now t is to be obtained now what i do is i'll consider motion again from o to b so here o is my initial point b is my final point and when the body moves from o to b the time elapsed is t by 2 isn't it as i stated students the vertical component of velocity at the highest point is zero this is a very very important point during a projectile motion the vertical component of velocity 
at its highest point is always 0. Net velocity is not 0. Net velocity is equal to the horizontal component of velocity which is u cos theta. It is the vertical component of velocity which is 0 at the highest point. Right? So we will make use of this particular fact. So let's consider O to B. As students, let's make use of the first equation of motion. So along vertical, let's make use of first equation of motion, which is V is equal to U plus H. So since we are considering along vertical, so it will be like this. Vx equals to Uy. Vy, actually it is equal to Uy plus Ayt. We are considering the kinematic first equation of motion along the vertical direction, right? V equals to U plus AT. Now, V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity. Initial position is O, final position is B, O to B. We are considering from O to B. That's why it's compulsory to write this, right? O to B. So, at point B, what is the final velocity of the projectile along the vertical direction? It is zero, right? So, it is zero at point B. U, Y, what is the Initial vertical component of velocity at point O, which is the initial point, it is u sin theta. Ay, projectile is moving in the upward direction. So Ay is minus g. Vertical motion is under the influence of gravity. So Ay is minus g. Small t. Now look friends. From O to B, the time taken by the projectile is equal to half the time of flight. Remember the point? Time of ascent is equal to time of descent. Total time of flight is capital T. So, in order the projectile to move from O to the highest point, it will take half the time of flight. So, it is T by T. So, students simply rearrange the terms and we have got the expression for the time of flight. So, T is equal to 2u sin theta divided by G. So, just a single step. And we are with the result of time of flight. So time of flight of a projectile during the angular projection. When it is projected with velocity u making an angle theta with the horizontal is 2u sin theta divided by g. Theta is the angle which the projectile its directional motion makes with the horizontal. Right? So this is the expression for the time of flight. Right? So we are over with time of flight as well. Let's find out the expression for the maximum height. Now again, we need to find out the expression for maximum height h. So obviously we need to consider vertical motion, right? We need to consider vertical motion only. Also, it should be from O to B. So we are considering the motion from O to B and along vertical. Clear students? Now here again, we have to make use of this fact that the vertical component of velocity of the projectile at the highest point is 0, right? And we need to get the relationship between velocity and displacement. So here judiciously make use of any one of the three kinematic equations of motion. So I think using third equation of motion we can get the expression for the maximum height in a single step, right? So consider third equation of motion. That is b square minus u square is equal to 2as. Now look friends, we are considering the kinematic third equation motion along vertical, along vertical, so along y-axis. Right? Along y-axis. And we are considering the motion from O to B. That is from O to B. Right? So what is the final vertical component of velocity at the final point B? It is 0. Okay. Initial vertical component of velocity at point O is u sin theta. It is u sin theta. Let's keep on substituting the value. Twice. What is Ay? Body is initially moving upwards. So Ay is minus g. So it is minus g. Sy. From O to B, what is the displacement covered by the body along the vertical direction? That is h. So switch, that's it. We have got the expression for h. Minus, minus get cancelled, there is 0. Minus, minus get cancelled. So h would be equal to, therefore, maximum height. It would be equal to u sin theta whole square. That will give us u square 
sin square theta divided by u square sin square theta divided by 2g and minus minus will get cancelled. So students, this is the third important result which you need to remember. You need to remember its derivation part as well. It's a single step derivation. Look, we are doing the simplest method. We are following the simplest method so as to obtain these expressions for time of flight, the maximum height. There shouldn't be any sort of confusion. You should enjoy doing these articles. They are so very simple. Right? So this is the expression for time of flight. 2u sin theta by g. And that's the expression for the maximum height. It is u square sin square theta by twice g. The only thing to be noted is that square. Which motion is to be considered from O to B, from O to C. Along what direction the motion is to be considered. Along vertical, along horizontal. Isn't it? So, and make use of either of the three kinematic equations of motion judiciously. So keeping these points in mind, we can easily get the expression. Right? Okay. So we are over with the expression for the maximum height as well. Right? Let's derive the expression for the range that is capital R. So in order to find an expression for the range, obviously, we need to consider motion along horizontal. We need to consider motion along horizontal. We need to find R. It's in the horizontal direction. And range as you are aware students, it's defined as the distance covered by the projectile along the horizontal, along the ground, in the time during which the projectile remains in air or space. Right? So, expression for the range. So, consider motion O to C and along horizontal. It's again a single step derivation. Right? Along horizontal, obviously. Let's make use of the second equation of motion. S equals to UP plus half AP square. Along horizontal. So, we need to consider the X component. Along horizontal. Okay. Now, what is the distance covered by the body along horizontal from O to C? That is R. So, in place of SX, it is R, which is the range. What is UX? Initial horizontal component of velocity at point O, which is the initial. It is U cos theta. What about T? Total time by taken by the projectile to move from O to C, it's capital T, which is the time of flight. Plus half. What is AX? I have repeated it many a times. No horizontal force is acting on it. FX is 0, therefore AX is 0. Right? So, acceleration along the horizontal is always 0. So, this term gets eliminated. We are left with R is equal to U cos theta multiplied by T. T is towards the time of flight. Just now we have derived an expression for the time of flight, it is 2u sin theta divided by g, right? So time of flight is 2u sin theta divided by g. This is the expression for the time of flight. Okay. Now look, this may be written as u square 2 sin theta cos theta divided by g or range r is equal to u square sin 2 theta. So in sin 2 theta, you must be aware of this trigonometric formula. Sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta cos theta. Right? So 2 sin theta cos theta will be written as sin 2 theta divided by g. So this is the fourth important expression or rather formula. So this is the expression for the range of the projectile. So expression for the range is u square sin 2 theta by g. Right? So, we are over with the expression for range as well. There are some various cases, right? In which case the range of a projectile for a given angular projection is maximum, then we will also discuss that the range will be same for projection of theta as well as 90 minus theta for a given uh, velocity of the projectile, right? That also we are going to prove. So let's discuss some special cases then.
Okay, let's start with case one. Case one is towards maximum range. Let's consider this part. The maximum range. R max. Okay, consider this expression. Range is u square sine 2 theta by g. The maximum value of sine is plus 1, isn't it? So, R would be equal to R max only when sine 2 theta is equal to 1. Maximum value of sine is 1, isn't it? Therefore, R max would be equal to, if we substitute sine 2 theta as 1, so the maximum range would be equal to u square by g. This is the expression for the maximum range. So R max is equal to u square by g. And the projectile will be able to cover maximum horizontal range only when it is projected with some velocity at an angle of 45 degree. Let's prove it. Over here, look. Sin 2 theta, it must be equal to 1. For range to be maximum, sin 2 theta must be equal to 1. Right? Now, sin 90 is 1, isn't it? Therefore, on comparing these two, we get 2 theta is equal to pi by 2 or theta is equal to pi by 4 radian or 45 degree. So, this is another very very important result. So students, the range of a projectile is maximum when the angle of projection is 45 degree. And always remember, the maximum range when for a given velocity it is projected at an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal is u square by g. Clear? So that was a very very important case. We will discuss the second case now. Okay, let's consider the second special case, right? Second case is range of a projectile for a given velocity of projection is found to be same for angle of projection theta as well as 90 minus theta. Let's find out. When angle of projection is theta. Diagram is like this, right? Let me draw it again. So this is it. Suppose it is projected with velocity u making angle theta with the horizontal. So it will be like this. So in this case range is suppose r1. And just now we obtained its expression. It is u square sin 2 theta divided by g. Right? This is the expression for the range. Just now we have mathematically verified. Right? Now second is when, when the angle of projection for the same velocity is 90 minus theta. That is complementary angle. Now when angle of projection is instead of theta, now it is 90 minus theta. Now let me draw the diagram for this. Okay. This is suppose 90 minus theta. Mind it, in both the cases the velocity of projection must be same. The velocity of projection must be same. Here suppose the range is R2. Let us consider this to be R2. Right? Let us find out the expression for R2 now. We can make use of the same formula. Here instead of writing theta we have to write 90 minus theta. So let us find out the expression for R2. What we get is u square sine 2 theta. In place of theta we need to write 90 minus theta. So it will be like this. 90 minus theta divided by g. So on solving what do we get is u square sine 180 
माइनस टू थीटा डिवाइडेड बाय जी इज इट सो वी गेट आर टू इज इक्वल टू साइन वन एटी माइनस टू थीटा टू बी इक्वल टू साइन टू थीटा इज इट सो वी गेट यू स्क्वायर साइन टू थीटा डिवाइडेड बाय जी ना कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन दिस टू Whether the angle of projection is theta or the angle of projection is 90 minus theta, in both the cases the range is found to be exactly same. So, what's the conclusion then? Conclusion is, friends, listen to me very very carefully. It's a very important point. For a given velocity of projection, the range of the projectile is found to be same for angle of projection theta. Or 90 minus theta. That is, for given velocity of projection, if the angle of projections are complementary, then the range is found to be same. I will elaborate it further. A body is projected at an angle of 20 degree. At this other instant, another body is projected, say, at an angle of 70 degree, right, with respect to the horizontal and In both the cases, the velocity of projection is same. So that is 70, and the first one is 20. They are complementary angles. So in both the cases, the range of the bodies must be same. So for 30 degree, 60 degree, they are complementary. Range will be same for the given velocity of projection, right, friends? For 25 degree, 65 degree, the range will be same. For 10 degree, for 80 degree, again. The angles being complementary, the range would be same for the given velocity of projection. So that's the conclusion. So we are over with the range, the expression for the maximum range, and then this a very very important result. I will show it diagrammatically as well. Let's represent this result diagrammatically. So range of a projectile for a given velocity of projection is found to be same when the angle of projection is complementary. That is, one angle is 90, the other would be 90 minus theta. In both the cases, the range will be same. So I am trying to I am trying to represent this uh, obtained conclusion diagrammatically, right? So this will be it. This is x-axis. This is y-axis. Suppose body is projected with velocity u, make an angle theta with the horizontal. It will be like this. And in the second case, the body is projected with the same velocity, making an angle 90 minus theta with the horizontal. So it will make an angle 90 minus theta with the horizontal. This is the horizontal, right? This is the vertical. If it makes an angle 90 minus theta with the horizontal, then with the vertical it will make an angle theta. Isn't it? Again, I repeat, students. If the direction of motion of the body makes an angle 90 minus theta with the horizontal, then it will make an angle of theta with the vertical, right? So in this case, the range is found to be exactly same. So this is the range. This is what we have proved. Again, I repeat the conclusion, students. For a given velocity of projection. The range is found to be same if the angle of projections are complementary. That is, whether the angle of projection is theta degree or 90 minus theta. For the given velocity of projection, the range in both the cases must be same. This is what I have tried to diagrammatically represent this very fact. Right? So we are over with the case of range. Then. Next is. Velocity of the body when it strikes the ground. Now, as we have discussed, this is the velocity v r, right? Resultant. And at any instant, the horizontal and the vertical they are mutually perpendicular to each other. Therefore, the magnitude of the resultant is given by square root of v x square plus v y square. Now, v x final horizontal component of velocity is equal to The initial horizontal component of velocity, and it is equal to u cos theta. It will always remain constant. 
Now let's find out Vy. For Vy, let's find consider motion along vertical. Along vertical. Right? So let's consider first equation of motion. Vy is equal to Uy plus Ayt. And we are considering the motion from O to C. We are considering the motion from O to C. O is the initial point and C is the final point. We need to find out the expression for this Vy. Right? So we need to consider the final point to be C. So Vy, this is to be found. It is the final vertical component of the velocity at point C. Uy, initial vertical component of velocity is U sin theta. Initially the body is moving in the upward direction, so Ay is minus G. And from O to C, the total time that has elapsed is capital T. It is the time of flight. So substitute the value of time of flight which is 2u sin theta by g. Let's get the answer. So Vy it would be equal to u sin theta minus g in place of capital T you can write 2u sin theta divided by g. So this gg get cancelled. u sin theta minus 2u sin theta that will give us students minus u sin theta. There's a very important conclusion. What is Uy? Uy is what is Uy? This Uy is u sin theta. What is Vy? It is minus u sin theta. So just try to conclude these two, u sin theta and these two. They are equal in magnitude. And this negative sign indicates that both are opposite directed. So the initial vertical component of velocity is u sin theta. The final vertical component of velocity is minus u sin theta. So basically what I mean to say is that during the projection or during striking the ground, in both the cases the vertical component of velocity, they are of same magnitude. Right? But opposite directed. In this case it was directed upward. In this case it is directed downwards towards the negative y-axis. So magnitude of vertical component is same. Horizontal component of velocity remains constant. So the velocity with which the projectile is projected must be exactly equal to the velocity with which it strikes the ground. Right? So, let's see. Therefore, net velocity, resultant velocity, it would be equal to square root of Vx square. So, Vx is u cos theta. So, u cos theta whole square. Plus, Vy square, that is minus u sin theta whole square. Let's solve it. So strength u square can be taken as common. It will be cos square theta plus sin square theta. Cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1. Square root of u square it will give us u. Therefore, resultant velocity with which it strikes the ground is equal to u. Which is its initial velocity of projection. So, resultant velocity is u. In magnitude. So another very very important point, it's a key point. The projectile strikes the ground with the same velocity with which it was projected. That is, the magnitude of the velocity of projection is equal to the magnitude of the velocity of the projectile with which it strikes the ground. That is what we have proved. Right? Now, suppose this angle is beta. Now velocity being same, so angle theta must be equal to angle beta in magnitude, isn't it? Because look, it is u, this is u cos theta, it should be also equal to u cos theta. If you resolve this u, it will be equal to u cos beta, isn't it? If you resolve this u into two components, we have proved that resultant velocity over here is u. And if it makes an angle beta with the horizontal, then if you resolve u into two components, we get u cos beta. And this will be u sin beta. And this is also u cos theta. So comparing these two, what we get? Magnitude of theta is equal to magnitude of beta. Clear students? And there's a very important concept over here. This is the reference line. Here, theta is oriented around this direction in the anti-clockwise direction and here 
beta is measured again from this reference line in the clockwise direction. So actually the relationship between theta and beta is theta it is equal to minus beta. This is again a very very important result which you need to remember. Right? Both are of equal magnitude, no doubt regarding that. But the orientation of the measurement of the angle with respect to the reference line is different. This is the reference line. That is the horizontal line. So here the angle is oriented in the anti-clockwise. And here the angle is oriented in the clockwise direction. So their orientation being different. So one would be equal to negative of the other. Equal sign shows both are of equal magnitude. Negative sign shows they are differently oriented. One in the anti-clockwise, the other one is the clockwise direction. Right? Okay. So, we are over with this result as well. Right? Next, let's find out the expression for the kinetic energy and potential energy at the highest point. Now look, suppose the body possesses initial kinetic energy which is given by initial kinetic energy. If it is projected with velocity u and suppose the projectile under consideration is of mass m then it will be equal to half m u square. This is the kinetic energy. It's a scalar quantity. So this is the kinetic energy. Right? This is actually the total energy as well. Because at the ground the potential energy is zero. It will be having only and only kinetic energy. At the highest point. This is at point O. At the highest point. Kinetic energy at the highest point. At the highest point, the net velocity is not zero. It is the vertical component of velocity which is zero. So at the highest point, the velocity of the projectile is entirely horizontal, which is u cos theta. So it will be half m. In place of u, we will write u cos theta. It is u cos theta. So what we get is half m u square cos square theta. So if the energy of the projectile initially is u, I have told you initially when the body is projected from the ground, the entire energy of the body will be kinetic because potential energy will be zero on the ground, isn't it? So E is the total energy possessed by the projectile during its projection, which will be entirely kinetic, which is half m u square. E is the total energy of the projectile, right? So, kinetic energy at the highest point would be equal to half m u square is E. It is the total energy possessed by the projectile initially, cos square theta. This is the expression for the kinetic energy possessed by the projectile at the highest point. Theta squares, remember, it is the angle which the direction of motion of the projectile makes with the horizontal. Right? Now, let's find out the potential energy at the highest point. It is mgh, isn't it? mg. At this point, it is at height h. Okay. So, mg. We have already obtained the expression for the maximum height, isn't it? It is u square sin square theta divided by twice g. 2 to get cancelled. So what we get is half m u square sin square theta. Half m u square is e, total energy sin square theta. So this is the expression for the potential energy at the highest point. So we have obtained the expression for both kinetic energy as well as potential energy at the highest point. Now as we are aware students, the total energy possessed by a body during its motion at any instant would be constant. Although kinetic and potential energy keeps on changing. As the body gains height, its kinetic energy will decrease and potential energy will increase. And as the body comes down, its potential energy will start decreasing and kinetic energy will start increasing. But the sum total of K and P at any instant during its motion will always remain constant. So, total energy 
at the highest point it will be equal to kinetic energy at the highest point and it will be equal to and it is equal to sum of kinetic energy at the highest point and the potential energy at the highest point this is potential energy at the highest point so substitute this value, kinetic energy at the highest point is E cos square theta, it is E sin square theta. What do you get is E cos square theta plus sin square theta. So total energy at the highest point, it is equal to E, which was the energy possessed by the projectile during its projection. So we have proved that total energy remains constant. Here during the projection total energy pauses was E, isn't it? At the highest point the total energy pauses is E. At the instant when the projectile strikes the ground, it pauses velocity U. So again, on striking the ground, its entire energy would be kinetic. So again half mu square, it would be equal to capital E only. So in the process, we have mathematically verified the law of conservation of energy as well, which states that Total energy of a body always remain conserved. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Although it can be transformed from one form into another form. So we are over with the last topic as well. So students, it was a very very important topic. Do practice the entire article. Try to remember the formulas as well as the derivation part. Right students? So that's it for this particular session. Do join me in my next lecture. Thank you.